news came out earlier this week um, that a hospital in Michigan has dropped Kirk Cousins as a spokesperson due to his comments uh, not in support of COVID-19 vaccinations. Last week, Cousins did a news conference where he basically said he'd do everything to protect his, quote, everything to protect his teammates, uh, except get vaccinated. Recently, the NFL sent a memo stating that, quote, if a game cannot be rescheduled during the 18-week schedule due to a COVID-19 outbreak among unvaccinated players, the team with the outbreak will forfeit and be credited with a loss. Uh, that includes uh, players, coaches, et cetera, not getting paid for that game day. Currently, the numbers show that at least 90% of the NFL players have received at least one dose of vaccination. So, Renee, should the league and teams be trying to limit these louder unvaccinated voices and elevate the significant majority of the league that is that is vaccinated and, and received at least one shot of vaccination? Or... Uh, will these financial consequences ultimately be the thing that brings pressure to bear on these unvaccinated voices like like cousins and others? Uh, well, first of all, money talks. So, yes, you know, you drop you drop Loud. a couple of those first Loud. spokesperson <laughs> checks. The first the hospital, something else then you start to reevaluate your decision. So that's that's first. But I don't think it matters who the NFL amplifies in a sense of if it's players that are for the vaccination or against it because this day and age in the digital age it used to be you watch players press conferences on the news that's the only place you really found that type of stuff but now with social media it doesn't matter if they highlight what Kirk Cousins says or not as soon as yeah. it hits the internet you and I will be retweeting it talking about it it will be digested in some way so I think now is to the point where teams don't have a choice leagues yeah. don't have a choice you know I know that the leagues probably wish that players wouldn't say half the things they said even yeah. look at the NBA with with the all-star game last year and the players basically saying to the media we don't want to have it we don't want no parts of it it's no good. And then the league still had to deal with that. So I think what you're seeing right now is a new wave in a sense of players are their own press releases. Players are their own press conferences because there's so many small outlets. You know, an outlet could pick up just the – like the team might not highlight Kirk Cousins, mm. but an outlet might find what he said, and then it's just as big as it was before. So I think that at this point, kind of to the NBA n – the the leagues don't have as much control as I think that they would wish they had. I mean, what do you what do you think I, about it? Do you think that that the leagues amplifying it matters, or should they? The NFL is trying to gain control clearly through these new rules, um, uh, particularly the the rules about forfeiting games and the fact that vaccinated players are not uh, liable to the same kind of stringent COVID protocols that unvaccinated players are. I think that. You know, sports is a microcosm, right? I think that the thing that we're dealing right with right now in this country, and I think the world in general, is how does my responsibility uh, to my to the broader society, right, to the people that are in my community that are immunocompromised or that uh, don't have the same kind of uh, financial resources that, that I do. How does my responsibility to those people, people that I've never met, interact with my personal freedom to do whatever the fuck I want to do? And I think that's a lot of what we're dealing with in this country writ large, where you have a lot of people for many, many reasons who don't want to take a vaccine. Many of them are citing personal freedom. They don't want to, uh, you know, kowtow to to this thing that is being pressed upon them. They see it as a, a rejection of their ability to have personal choice. And at the same time, that choice to not get vaccinated when you scale it up to millions of people, tens of thousands of people in a, in a community, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people in, in the nation, it adversely affects kids who can't get vaccinated until after, after 12. People uh, like Washington football team head coach Ron Rivera, who is immunocompromised and uh, faces dire, perhaps dire consequences if he contracts COVID-19. Um, and I think trying to figure out what that balance is, is a lot of what the, where the friction in our country is coming from. And that is being played out before our eyes in the NFL, in various sports. And I think we're heading towards a place where 
you're seeing the you the u s military just announced that uh that soldiers are gonna have to get be vaccinated all gonna have to be vaccinated yeah, various uh various state and local governments have announced that uh state workers have to be vaccinated various uh private companies have announced that um I think we're heading towards a place where it, you can either be vaccinated and prove that you have been or not. But it's not we're not going to have this halfway thing where some of the country is not going to get vaccinated and it's going to loudly tell you that they're not going to do it. And the other part of the country is like, no, we have to get vaccinated. Something is going to shift. And I think you're seeing it shift now with the NFL, with these various companies putting in these uh, vaccine mandates because unvaccinated people at this point are allowing this further spread of this virus and this spread of this virus is threatening the economic underpinnings of the NFL, of the various companies that exist within this country, and of the country writ large. As you said, money talks, and it talks really loud. And it's talking loudly right now, even if that connection doesn't seem uh, as as bright and obvious to everyone as it is be as it as it actually is. This is happening because the NFL is like our business model is under threat by COVID-19, so we have to do yeah. something. This is going to happen more and more. You're going to see more companies uh, enacting these kind of vaccine mandates, I think. This news uh, broke, and it's continuing to break right now, broke last week that uh, Leo Messi, one of the most iconic player uh, athletes in the world, certainly I think like top three iconic player over the last 10 years globally, sure. will be leaving the club that plucked him from Argentina as a as a literal child, Barcelona Football Club, six time Balloon d'Or winner, uh, multiple time uh, world champion, multiple time La Liga champion, multiple time Champions League champion, is leaving Barcelona. I never thought I would see it, and it's happening because basically Barcelona is in debt to the tune of some billion plus euros. Now, formally, what? yes, an, an immense number. Not only that, but oh but the, the wage part of that is the wage bill. Okay, Barcelona has been a titan of of world football. They pay Leo Messi. His last salary was seventy five million euros. A year, which is like almost a hundred million dollars a year, which is <laughs> crazy, oh. crazy, crazy Ooh, money. God. <laughs> and to surround him with the talent that uh, that was necessary to surround him with, they were also signing, you know, numerous name players from other leagues around the world. Even bench guys were making insane salaries, and uh, La Liga in order to kind of protect the financial underpinnings of the league and to allow other teams to compete, put in a rule where there is essentially a floating salary cap that limits the amount that teams can spend to 70% of all revenues coming in. And Barcelona basically exceeded that amount with the deal that they agreed to with Leo Messi. In other words, they could have signed him if not for these rules. Their their card got declined, and now Messi will go to uh, Paris Saint-Germain in France's League One. League One has been uh, has been criticized for not really enacting their their own financial fair play rules in in this kind of stringent manner that La Liga is doing. Uh, Paris Saint Germain is owned by uh, essentially the nation of Qatar <laughs> owns it's PSG. Easy. What? Uh, yeah, the the nation of Qatar uh, uh, owns PSG. Like that's how they can afford to do this. They are that's owned crazy. by uh, the Qatari Investment Group, that is owned by the King of Qatar, and therefore they can afford to do it. Uh, Barca is 1.3 billion euros in debt. They just uh, they just added more players that people have heard of, including Sergio Aguero, multiple time champion with Man City, Memphis Depay, others. Losses for the 2021 season for Barca would exceed uh, 200 million euros because of COVID. So that's it, and that's why that. That's why Messi will probably join PSG. I should note that a fan, a Barcelona fan, has filed a suit against oh my God. against Barcelona in a French court, saying essentially that hey, it's not fair that that uh, Barcelona is lo losing um, Messi to PSG because the French league does not 
it, it does not enforce its financial fair play rules fairly or strictly in the same way that La Liga is doing it. And therefore, it's unfair that Messi is is going to uh, PSG. But all of which is to say that this is a, a, a real earthquake in international soccer and is a thing that I don't think anybody ever saw coming. And he's and Messi is going to the one team that could really afford to sign him which is a team owned by Qatar. It's truly crazy. Listen, there's a lot of mess going on with soccer. I mean, we had some of the teams wanting to take flight and create their own Super League, and yes. now we're coming back and it's getting messy with Messi, and he's just a he <laughs> Like, I'm like, I really might have to start getting into soccer, at least the news of soccer, because this is like some wild stuff. The card got declined. These are things I hear about every day. People's cards is getting declined. People are spending more than what they have. It sounds like soccer is doing what everyone does just on a bigger scale but yeah i'm very this is very interesting to me like the whole setup that a team is owned by qatar like what are we yes. like this is like yeah soccer and for the people who are like duh i'm really just not in the soccer world so jason gives me all this new information at once and it's like what is going on so and just again to he the PSG has announced that they're going to sign Messi to about a 40 million euro deal. 40 million euros is probably like I'm going to say 42 million dollars a a year, which is wild, but it is a significant pay cut from his 75 million euro uh, a year salary, which was about 88 million dollars. Imagine a year 42 in USD. million being a big pay cut. Like what? <laughs> I mean, imagine imagine <laughs> making 88 million dollars a year. What is uh, LeBron? like makes like 33 like it, you can max out at about 40 ish in the nba which is a lot but double that in international soccer double that jason we are still coming down from that tornado in the nba last week called free agency as we all know oh man there were some upgrades as the week progressed namely some shooters. They need some shooters at the Lakers. Miami out in my <laughs> homie Cal Lowry <laughs> and the Bulls are out here making moves. Unless the NBA, you know, there's that tampering thing going on. I still need uh, to we'll find talk more about, about it. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk more about, about that. that later. <laughs> but I have to know, like, what do you think about some of the team additions, starting with the Lakers? Like, what are your thoughts on what's going on? Well, first of all, uh, Russell Westbrook, LeBron, Anthony Davis, Dwight yeah. Howard, <laughs> among others, plus free agent guard Kendrick Nunn, uh, one of the younger, uh, <laughs> younger additions to the team, as well as Malik Monk. Uh, join the Lakers. Uh, on paper, this is a team that, you know, the joke is like, they're a lock to win the 2013 finals. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but listen, on paper, an incredible, like that starting five is uh, going to be, uh, going to be beastly. Uh, Carmelo Anthony also joined as, uh, to add some necessary shooting. Uh, number nine scorer in NBA history. That's huge. I I'm a little... Like, I'm a little concerned about depth. Obviously, if you're paying three players, LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook, like $150 million, it's going to be hard to fill out a team. Russell Westbrook at the moment is the only actual point guard on the roster. I'm sure LeBron yeah. will fill in some there. I'm sure Taylor Horton Tucker will fill in some there. I'm sure, uh, you know, Malik Monk will fill in some there, but... In terms of depth, I think that's a that's a real question, as is shooting. Shooting is one of those things in the NBA now. It used to be yeah. like, oh, get a couple of specialists. Now you can't get enough. And I think with the with the particular build of this Laker team, this is a team that can't get enough shooting. It'd be it'd be super interesting. We're gonna be talking about them all season. Yeah, LeBron definitely. fired back briefly on Twitter uh, <laughs> about people who are who were talking about how old the team is, and then he deleted it, which was interesting. Uh, but gonna, it's going to be a fascinating team. What do you think about them? You know, I think that the entire community of veterans lies on this Lakers team. And, and yeah. hear me out, because a lot of people, as we see, athletes want to play until a later age now. You know, it used to be all mm -hmm. oh, 32, 33. You're getting up there. Time to kind of shut it down. Yeah, you're out. But athletes nowadays, they want to play past that. 32, 33, they want to sometimes play into their 40s, as we see now with a Tom Brady, you know, mm -hmm. even a Sue Bird. There's a lot yep. of players that are playing into an older age or a later age. And so imagine the Lakers with this team of this group they have. What if they come out and have an amazing season? 
Like, yeah. what if they come out and all those age questions are just a race because they're so smart or they play so well together or they have so much basketball IQ that it might balance it out? That would be huge for all the veterans in any sport in any world because they will refer to this team as the veteran team that got it done. So I'm really, really curious to see what happens with these Lakers because I know a lot of people are watching them. This is almost like an experiment happening in a sense of LeBron, like you said, he clapped back as LeBron he will did. do. And yes, it, he did. He, he let everybody know that we see the tweets, we hear the talk, keep that same energy down the line. So that already lets you know that they gave them some some chalkboard talk, some chalk talk and locker room talk. So I'm really excited, not to mention that THT, one of their young guns, signed yeah. a three-year deal for $32 million. He's up here. By the way, I should mention I'm in Vegas for Summer League. THT showed up to Summer League yesterday like he was a vet. He's dabbing up <laughs> players playing. I mean, he came through like, yo, what up? Yeah, I got this contract on the way. But they are mixing in some young guys. But I'm telling you, this will be interesting because a lot of people are watching. Can players play past that necessarily prom age? Man, he is a vet in terms of like summer league where everybody's young and just trying to make their way into the league. You know, it's funny. One of my favorite summer league moments uh, involves the Lakers. Mark Madsen, this is several years ago now, Mark Madsen was coaching the uh, the Lakers squad at summer league and they got beat in summer league and uh, in the game. And they interviewed him afterwards and he was like, <laughs> Mark Madsen was like, it's on me, it's on me. Uh, I didn't have the guys ready. I didn't have them prepared. This, this is on me. I'm, 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 I'm going to take this loss. I'm going to take this loss. I, I'm taking full responsibility for that. I'm like, Mark, it's summer league, my guy. It's go play, league, go my play guy. blackjack like, and please calm down. You know, oh please relax. Hey, listen, he's taking it serious, okay? He's ready. <laughs> ready. And then there is the Miami Heat. Uh, yes. They add your guy Kyle Lowry, who joined what in up? the sign and trade three year contract worth $90 million, leaving the Raptors, where he is, I think it's fair to say, the greatest player in Raptors history. The Heat are also expected to sign Jimmy Butler to a max deal worth about $184 million over four. Victor Oladipo, which this is a big deal for them, adding depth and scoring, agreed to a one year minimum deal to stay with the Heat. Uh, and then, of course, Duncan Robinson. One of the great rags is unfair, but like nowhere to riches stories in sports history has signed a five year, 90, $90 million deal. Shouts to uh, Jason Gallagher, shouts to Tommy Alter, all my friends who work closely with Duncan Robinson. Uh, P.S. Ask him if I can borrow, if I can just hold 10 grand for a little while. <laughs> and I heard he's already doing okay. Let me, uh, let me hear that. That, they are going to put their hands on people. They've also uh, added P.J. Tucker, who they signed from the Bucks. Uh, that, man, that is a Heat team that is going to make squads work for everything. What do you think about the Heat? I think that you that's the team that you don't want to play. Absolutely I don't care not. if it's the beginning of your road trip. Absolutely the not. End, like you imagine Cal Lowry in there taking charges, Jimmy Butler harassing whoever he's guarding. I mean, even think about a PJ Tucker. Look what yeah. he did. Look what he did this. Bam this out of bio playoff. who can Bam. who can do who can play anywhere on the court defensively. I mean, defensively, that's where they're going to obviously hold their cap. No shocker alert there, yeah. but it, this is different. This is a team that's put together defensively in a world where the NBA is so focused on offense. I mean, the players that we just talked about aren't necessarily – Cal Lowry is a three-point shooter, a great three-point shooter, but everyone else that we're talking about, it's not those snipers or it's not that yeah. – offensive repertoire that you think of Jimmy Buckets can get a bucket so let me just say that but we know Jimmy Buckets as a two-way player so it's the fact that he can do both and then you got a PJ Tucker he's the DN3 guy can knock down that corner three but it's like these guys you could tell where Miami's head was at when they signed this oh, yeah. team and they'll be I mean they'll be fun to watch because I'm looking forward to watching Miami play any offensive powerhouses like a Golden State Warriors or Portland like I'm looking to see how do they do against those big offensive clubs, you know? I'm tired already thinking about watching them. <laughs> that's how physical, you know, they have this culture already that's been in place ever since Pat Riley has been with the franchise. Uh, and that culture seems to pervade the entire team all the way down. Udonis Haslam obviously has remained yep. on the team as this 
culture carrier as this person on the ground who is telling the players what it means to be a Miami Heat player. I, I just think back to, you know, a million years ago, Pat Riley was the coach of the Knicks. He, in order to stay with the Knicks, he was asking for like a piece of the team and to be GM and to have a voice in player decisions. And the Knicks said no. And then he went to Miami and the Knicks remained the Knicks. And I think I hated him as, as a kid. I was like, man, fuck Pat Riley. How dare he? Do <laughs> and now I'm like, man, they should have, they should have given him that piece. Right. What does it mean to yeah. me? I don't, I don't know the team. They should have done it. I mean, that's, that is going to be a team that, that will work other teams to the bone like you may beat the heat but you are going to sweat to do it and listen you talked about culture the bulls have some of the most iconic culture ever you know even to yeah. the point of their their introductions you know we all know about their introductions and how it works because michael jordan played there we remember that yeah but the bulls have been making some moves too with demar Derozan signing a three-year 85 milli contract Lonzo Ball, four year, eighty five million. Alice Caruso. Now this one's interesting because all the Lakers fans, the Lake. Lake Show, they were crying. Yeah! They were crying. They were Lake crying. Lake Show. Alice Caruso, fresh out of jail, went straight to the Bulls, <laughs> man. And I know for a four year, thirty seven million deal, I know that hurt the Lake Show because he's a fan favorite yeah, due to how he plays. I mean, you got to give him credit. He built that. You know, he built that fandom with how his style, his hustle. And then, you know, it's just that Bulls club. They already have a Zach Levine. So yes. I'm, I'm interested to see what that nucleus can do, adding Lonzo and DeMar. Again, I don't know how strong they can be, but I like the moves in a sense of the Bulls needed to do something. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I'm not excited in the sense that now the Bulls, a, a, a arrival to the Knicks in the Eastern Conference and the Hawks as well have gotten better. It's going to be super exciting. Yeah. Caruso, Lonzo, and Levine is going to be gas. That is going to be so fun. The interesting thing to me is that you have two players in Lonzo and Levine who want to run, and then you've got like Demar, who is thirty-two, uh, Vucevic, yep. who is a, a big who just kind of jogs to a great scoring big, not a great defender, but not the fastest. So you've got like half the team wants to run, and half the team doesn't want to run. <laughs> How is that going to shake out? What is that going to mean? <laughs> uh, but it, it's super exciting. Like, I, again, Lonzo uh, and Levine is that is going to be super fun. And as a person yeah. who, you know, I I, I was team uh, Zach Levine is not a winning player. And he took a leap last couple of seasons in terms of his scoring 28 a game, I think, last year on eight, eight three pointers a game. That is you just can't deny what an impact scorer he is and defensively it's he's still not great but he's also not terrible and that's going to be a really really fun team that's like a that's like an nba league pass watch absolutely team. like you gotta you gotta watch when they're on just because i mean lonzo we know that he's a flashy player and it's exciting but something that you gotta be excited about i'll huh? let you have it with your knicks man talk let's go to me about your talk to okay. me about your knicks so it's a strange feeling <laughs> being a Knicks fan and and looking at this team and thinking, man, I guess our front office is pretty good. Julius Randle, <laughs> uh, uh, who made his first appearance on, on an all-star team last year, who made his first appearance on an NBA, all-NBA list last year, who had a, a career-defining year last year, uh, lifting the Knicks into playoff contention, ha agreed to a four-year, $117 million contract, elevating his deal's total value over five years to $140 million. He could have opted in for this year and then opted out the year after for a $200 million plus max deal. He didn't do that. He put his trust in the team. One could argue with the recent history of the Knicks, maybe that was unwise, but he did do that. And uh, we also managed to sign Kemba Walker uh, after the guard got a buyout from the Oklahoma City Thunder. OKC wants to, they want to go all youth. They got uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. They have Lou Dort. They have a bunch of young players they want to get playing time. They want to get them playing time. Winning is not so important to them. So they so they uh, 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 bought out Kemba Walker. And listen, he's maybe the most iconic New York player to never play for New York. UConn legend. <laughs> all of UConn? so many, so many magic moments in MSG, not in yeah. a Knicks uniform. And now to finally get him here 
it's great. Now, there are questions. Obviously, the knee injury from last year had a very uh, didn't yeah. look great. Uh, when he was on the floor for the Celtics, never really seemed to manage to to like integrate into like the way they play. Um, that said, even if he is not what he was, not to the level of Kemba Walker from three four years ago, he is such a huge upgrade in terms of their starting point guard. Yeah. Now you can move Derrick Rose to the bench, where he can just attack. Uh, second unit guards, which is his, that's his strength. He doesn't worry, have to worry about playmaking, just score, score, score. Uh, Alfred Payton, uh, who the Knicks lost every Alfred Payton minute last season. Now uh, we don't have to worry about that. Add to the fact that uh, the Knicks added Evan Fournier, who is, I think, a good scorer and a good secondary creator. And now they've checked off a bunch of those boxes, the, the weaknesses that were exposed by your Atlanta Hawks Ooh. in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, lack of, lack of, Creativity, lack of scoring, right? Lack of depth. The Knicks have have checked all those boxes. It's great. And while they haven't elevated themselves into like a surefire top four playoff team, they've done the thing which it, which they which they want to do, which is show to any star players that might shake loose in uh, for for the trade deadline or might shake loose yeah. in free agency in the future that hey. We're not a disaster anymore. In fact, we're a solid team. We have a plan. We're implementing that plan. We have a good coach. Uh, and you can come here and you can thrive. Look at how crazy these fans are for a team that is the fourth seed that overachieved. <laughs> Look at this. Don't you want to be part of this? And they can say that credibly now. That's what's blown my mind for even the past years. The Knicks are an easy sell. Playing at Madison Square Garden is an easy sell. So whenever the Knicks are struggling, I'm like, people want to play there. So if the organization ever figured it out a little bit, kind of to what you're saying, yeah. started making solid decisions, you're going to be able to gobble up some free agents in a hurry. People just don't want to go there if it's going to be a losing, a losing organization and it doesn't look like it has direction. But there's direction happening now. And, and you talked about Julius Randle having trust in the team. I mean, I think it works both ways. Julius Randle didn't have the best of exits in the yeah. playoffs. You know, there was a lot yeah. of things exposed. So I think this was a smart move by both to just, Agreed. let's just get the deal done. 140, five years. We both understand that we want to build together. I think that that was the perfect deal. And then if you guys even see a hint of cardiac <laughs> Kimba, if cardiac Kimba just, that's makes all we his need. way... Just if, a drizzling. If you guys see a hint of cardiac Kimba, I mean, you got a, a sprinkle. Okay, calm down because we're the same conference. Okay, calm down because I got <laughs> sprinkling. I, you were turning up. But if you guys, that's like, you know, Kimba, he's a UConn guy, but he's just a really good guy. So I always yeah. wish the best for him all, unless he's playing against the Hawks. But you, <laughs> I think that he's going to recover. I think playing at home is going to be a big factor. Mm -hmm. I think getting traded, bounced out of the Celtics, like, so quickly with all the promise that he had, I think that's going to be part of his drive to come back. Okay. I think even just the way that it happened with OKC getting, you know, the buyout. I just think when you're a good player and you feel like you're being shuffled around or you feel like you're being tossed around or bounced around, that's motivation to add to the board, too. And so I think with all of those things and, you know, Kemba's a New York guy, so there's pride. There's that chip on his shoulder. I just think that this is a great sign for the Knicks and I'm crossing my fingers because you know I'm all the way team Hawks but yes. I just you know it's it just makes sense what's going on there and speaking of the Hawks okay just speaking of the Hawks we did there's no it's a no shocker alert with what happened yes. with the Hawks John Collins signed a five-year 125 million deal congrats and while him. we didn't know what the congrats John you earned it and while we didn't know what that deal, like the money amount, we knew he earned himself a big paycheck, so he got it. And then the Hawks agreed to a five-year, $207 million deal for Trey Young again. I don't know if anyone is surprised. No, no uh, surprise. Trey Young. <laughs> Trey Young is a max player type. Coach Nate McMillan is back as the official head coach. So our nucleus is there. I'm going to see if we can sprinkle in, like you said, sprinkle in Man. a little something else to add to it. But I like that we got our core back and, and, is, and is locked in. Well, it's all about health, right? I, I Like if, if, if the Hawks uh, can come back healthy next season, there's your improvement on paper, not to mention this is a team, even though it is run it back at this point, 
Yeah. Y'all made a leap in the playoffs, like a leap, a leap in confidence, a leap in the way you play, a leap in the way that that uh, Trey and the rest of his team uh, work together and trust each other. And I think that they're uh, the Hawks are scary. The Hawks are a scary team. And, and again, if they are healthy next season. With all their players next season. Yeah, DeAndre the, for, Hunter. Yes. We signed Lou Will back. Let me mention that yeah. we signed Lou Will back. DeAndre Hunter is coming back. We still have Red Velvet, Cam Reddish. Our nucleus is yeah. really there. So that's the healthy just that you're referring to. So if that if that's if that's in place, scary team. Extremely scary team, the Atlanta Hawks. And then Trey, yeah, there's no surprise there. You gotta lock him up. You have absolutely have to lock him up because everything runs through him. He is the absolute superstar of that team. Uh, and a guy that uh, I doubted for a while. And there's no, there's <laughs> no, there's no doubt. Like uh, he is one of the well, most you know what? flammable of, offensive players yes. in the league. And speaking of like chips on your shoulder, Trey, it just, the hits just keep coming for him. And for us Hawks fans, like I said, it's great. He got left off the USA team, which is recent. They just got gold. So that's burning in the inside. And I'm not, I haven't spoken to him about this. I'm just saying athlete to athlete. And then the All-Star game last year. So if people are thinking that Trey Young is like hype about what happened last year, I would highly doubt. I think everybody's thinking, let's run it bike. And mm -hmm. Clint Capella included, okay? So, uh, kind of breaking news in the NBA. We should note that the NBA has uh, begun a tampering investigation regarding the way the uh, Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat announced, processed their respective sign-and-trade agreements with Lonzo Ball and Kyle Lowry by league rules. Uh, teams aren't officially allowed to have contact with players under contract with another team. Like, player representatives, that's fine, and that happens year-round all the time, every minute, every hour of the calendar year. But actual team-to-player contact can't happen uh, until the moratorium lifts. Now, um, last year, the Bucks announced a... a, a a uh, sign and trade agreement with the Kings for Bogey Bogdanovich that the league then investigated because it was announced within minutes of the moratorium lifting. Uh, mm -hmm. And they were embarrassed by that. And they investigated and they found that uh, the Bucks had indeed tampered and they took a second round draft pick from them. And uh, Bogey Bogdanovich is now a member of the Hawks where he is doing, uh, where <laughs> oh, he is an important, oh. an important weapon for your Atlanta Hawks and not for the Bucks. Uh, we should also note that in 2019, the NBA uh, put in more stringent penalties for tampering, if tampering should be found. This included raising the maximum fines for teams to $10 million, the possibility that uh, team execs involved in this could be suspended, the forfeiting of draft picks as happened with the Bucks, and even perhaps the voiding of contracts, although I don't think anybody expects that step no. to see that step anytime soon. It, the league also has broad powers to uh, seize communications, including telephone records, text, emails, uh, et cetera. Now, as we have talked about many times, as many people have talked about, tampering happens. It's almost impossible to legislate. But it seems like the NBA steps in when they get embarrassed a little bit and people talk about it, which is what happened with the Bucks, and which is what I think has happened here with the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat, who both announced sign and trade deals within minutes of the moratorium lifting your thoughts yeah well first of all we kind of made light of this last week you know we were yeah we did we, we did. literally <laughs> were laughing that right when it, the gates open up it's just a flood and so it's no shocker alert i also wonder i agree jason i think it has a little bit to do with like captain obvious here somebody was talking yeah. before if you hadn't done minutes after but also too it's getting very super teamish in the NBA. So I don't know if if this is a way to start trying to get a hold of it because I, yeah, I think there's something to that. Yeah. You you know right. because there's there's so much movement going on and it's in superstars and role players included. The NBA with the path it's on, I don't know what it's going to look like, but you just start to see more even a DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball going to the Bulls, what's going on in Miami. Like I, the Lakers, you just start to see a lot of pal up happening. And so I wonder yeah. if the NBA is like, all right, we have to start getting control of everything, starting with free agency, starting with how teams are talking to players, starting with how things are functioning. We have to start getting some control because right now it, it really does feel like a free for all. 
in a sense of like, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't like I'm not we made light of it last week, but no one was surprised that people signed right away. So we clearly and, understand that the rules are being broken. And we're talking sign and trade deals, too, which I think is important because, listen, if you're just trading for a player or acquiring a player in free agency into your cap space, uh, there is a world in which it, that could be a verbal agreement. You run the numbers without actually having to talk to the player. You're like, oh, they'd want this much. A sign and trade requires the team that currently has the free agent yeah. to sign that player to the deal that the team who is acquiring the player wants, right? And right. then trading that player. So it's a very complex deal with multiple steps that requires... Uh, a lot of negotiation three ways between a player and the team that uh, he is currently employed by the player, the team and the, uh, the other team that is acquiring the player and the team that will one day acquire the player and the player that they hope to acquire. So there, it would just suggest that there is no looking at that. It's hard to believe that you could do that without talking to the player in some form or fashion. So I guess I'm yeah. not surprised by this, but it's uh, I, I agree with you. I think that anxiety about the way players move and the places that they go has been very high in the NBA, especially around small market teams who have had to adapt to this new landscape and try and you know create strategies for acquiring players and, and uh, within uh, the context of a league in which they understand that free agents are probably not going to come to their market. Yep. And so I think that I think that you're right that this in some way is, the league trying to gain control of a situation that they really don't have a lot of control over, right? They're saying, hey, we understand that this happens. Yeah. But if you push it, then we have to do something. And so it, it remains to be seen. Maybe we see some draft picks get forfeited. I, I think the Heat and uh, the Bulls actually don't have that many draft picks to forfeit. So that would be very interesting. Uh, maybe we see fines, but I, I think it starts at fines, moves to yeah. draft picks, and then moves to the canceling of the contract, kind of how they wrote it. So I think yeah. at this first go around, this is like, I feel like this investigation is like ringing the alarm, basically. Like, hey, right. everybody. Watch out. Yeah, watch calm out. Calm down. Like, yeah, like, and I think that it's going to escalate, escalate from there. But I mean, something. I don't know necessarily if this is going to stop the movement, though. People might just start moving during the right times. But players yeah. now, how do you put the genie back in the bottle? Like, you can't. I, I don't know. You can't well, stop trades, can you, anymore? I mean, we know what happened with Chris Paul. It was infamous. They stopped that trade. <laughs> yes. We know that there was more to it than that. But I don't know if we can go back to that type of canceling a trade out anymore. So there's not really much the NBA could do. Let me ask you this, because fines Nobody cares about fines because they don't count against the cap. Yeah. What if it was fines up to $10 million and that counts against your team's salary cap? I think that would Whoa. really <laughs> scare teams. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, that $10 would million? Be, dollars? A, uh, against the cap? That yeah. will, I mean, that throws you into the tax. That does. That's a red line. And I think that even without the draft picks, suspending execs, if – some amount of the fines came out of the cap of the team that uh, that broke these rules. I think that would really make execs and various franchises think twice about what they do. I agree. Because um, don't give them ideas, Jason. I don't know how to. Feel. <laughs> I, don't I don't know how to feel about giving ideas of how to find. <laughs> but I yeah. also. I really have to believe that I don't think the players like I, you like they're going to check the phone records and all this. If people yeah. are just talking on their normal phones, That's the thing. I would That's be like thing. shocked. So I, I don't know what they're going to find with this investigation, but I just do know that they probably this is the ringing the of the alarm. Like everybody, let's start to get back in order and get things like functioning properly. It's time for buzzer beaters where we talk Ooh. about the stories that we didn't cover in the show just because of time. Jason, I have been canonized into the DCU, which pretty sick. I feel very excited about because I'm just now, you know, getting further into it. I had CW star Grant Gustin, who plays the Flash on Remotely Renee. And to celebrate, I got myself some Flash artwork. Shout out to Darkwing Art, a.k.a. Dustin Watson of Heartland Group. 
They turned up, okay? So for all the listeners, go he check snapped. out the picture. Yeah, he snapped. Go check out the picture. It's on my Twitter. Jason, I know that you're a comic fanatic here at Crooked. Right. What do you think of this Flash cosplay? And and what character would you want to be made into? Because I know you're really into the world, the DC world. Are you into the Marvel world too? I don't know, but... Who would you have yourself be made as? I'm more of a Marvel guy, uh, but okay. I like DC as well. And this <laughs> art is un is truly unreal. Like, this is super, super cool. It is my long running dream, like since I was six years old, to like appear oh. in any comic book. I would, I'll take uh, Marvel would be the would be my top choice. I would take DC, of course. Um, probably Wolverine, who's uh, you know star of the X Men, uh, mutant fame is is an iconic character for the Marvel Comics group. For uh, you know, honestly, okay. I would take I would take Darkwing for for DC. Um, uh, I would you know Batman, one of the anybody in the Batman kind of universe. This is just incredibly cool. This wow. is so so cool. Wolverine, I'd like to see you as Wolverine. Yeah, get me get me my claws. <laughs> Keeping on the comic tip, I just saw a uh, James Gunn Suicide Squad movie this weekend, uh, and it is a really, really fun, uh, very colorful, and, and I think it's something that the DC universe in their in their film universe uh, really needs. Super fun. I love the way they put the uh, lettering on the screen, like a comic splash page, to to mark the chapter endings and starts. Really, really fun movie, and I got to say, I'm super jealous of this art, Renee. This is awesome. 